Right now, beneath Yellowstone National Park, there's a hidden monster that could wipe out humanity as we know it. Scientists call it a supervolcano. If it explodes, the skies would turn black, crops would die, and billions of people could be at risk. But here's the shocking part. It's not a matter of if Yellowstone erupts again, it's a matter of when. So, what actually happens when Yellowstone finally blows? Yellowstone might look like a peaceful getaway, but it's actually the world's oldest national park, sitting on nearly 9,000 square kilometers of wilderness. Most of it lies in Wyoming, with parts stretching into Montana and Idaho. Beneath the canyons, rivers, and hot springs hides something far more dangerous. An enormous supervolcano, 50 by 70 kilometers wide. To put that in perspective, the entire city of Los Angeles could fit inside its crater. And it's not just history. This volcano is still alive, still breathing, and still building pressure. Most people picture a volcano as a mountain with lava spilling down its sides. That's child's play compared to Yellowstone. A supervolcano doesn't just erupt, it detonates. Scientists define it as any eruption capable of blasting out over a thousand cubic kilometers of rock and ash. That's more than 50 times bigger than Krakatoa, the 1883 eruption in Indonesia that killed over 36,000 people. Now, imagine an explosion, not just heard across the globe, but one that darkens skies, disrupts climate, and reshapes continents. That's the difference between a normal volcano and Yellowstone. Think of a supervolcano, like a soda bottle, that's been shaken for thousands of years. Beneath Yellowstone, scorching hot rock rises from deep in the Earth's mantle, melting parts of the crust into magma. Over time, this magma collects in a giant chamber, along with water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane. As more magma builds, the ground above starts to bulge, like a slow-motion balloon. Cracks form, pressure skyrockets, and eventually, just like opening that shaken soda, the volcano explodes. Only this time, instead of fizz, it's ash, fire, and molten rock raining across continents. And scientists say Yellowstone is already showing signs of this dangerous buildup? And here's the scary part. This supervolcano isn't some ancient relic. It's already erupted three times before, and the clock is still ticking. Yellowstone has already erupted not once, not twice, but three times in Earth's history. The first massive blast happened 2.1 million years ago. The second followed 800,000 years later, and the third, the most recent, was about 640,000 years ago. Do the math, and you'll notice something chilling. These eruptions are spaced out in a way that suggests Yellowstone is due. Geologists hate the word overdue, but they agree that one day this volcano will blow again. Right now, Yellowstone sits on top of three overlapping calderas, giant craters left behind by those ancient explosions. Each one is a scar that proves the supervolcano doesn't just sit quietly forever. So if it's erupted before, what exactly would cause it to erupt again? And what's happening beneath Yellowstone right now? Here's the reality. At this very moment, Yellowstone's crust and mantle are hot, but not molten enough to trigger an eruption. Scientists believe the magma chamber beneath the park would need to be at least 50% liquid for an explosion to happen. Right now, it's closer to 15%. That means we're safe, for now. But here's where it gets interesting. Since 2004, parts of Yellowstone's surface have been rising, in some areas, nearly three inches per year. That might not sound like much, but when the land over an area the size of a small country is swelling upward, it's a sign that magma is on the move. In fact, deep beneath the park, geologists have identified a giant plume of hot rock stretching nearly 400 miles down into the Earth's mantle. Think of it as a conveyor belt of heat, slowly feeding Yellowstone's magma chamber. And if that magma keeps building, pressure increases, cracks form, and eventually, the system has no choice but to vent. The only question is, will it release pressure in a small, harmless burst or in a catastrophic explosion? Let's imagine the worst case scenario, what happens if Yellowstone actually erupts? If Yellowstone did erupt at full force, the first moments would be catastrophic. Within seconds, an explosion hundreds of times more powerful than Hiroshima would rip through the park. Anyone within a 100 mile radius would almost certainly be killed instantly by the blast and searing heat. But the lava itself wouldn't be the main killer. Instead, it's the ash. Volcanic ash isn't soft or flaky like fireplace soot. It's razor sharp like tiny shards of glass. 
Breathe it in, and it shreds your lungs, hardening into a cement-like paste inside your body. The immediate death toll is estimated at over 100,000 people, mostly across Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. Cities like Denver, Salt Lake City, and even Chicago could see heavy ash fall. Planes would drop from the sky, highways would vanish, rivers would clog with sludge, and that's just North America. The real danger comes next. The ash clouds spreading into the stratosphere, blocking out the sun. Within weeks, temperatures would plunge, crops would fail, and food supplies would begin to collapse. In fact, we've seen this kind of catastrophe before, just not on this scale. History gives us a clue. Around 74,000 years ago, Mount Toba in Indonesia erupted and blasted so much ash into the stratosphere that Earth fell into a volcanic winter. Temperatures dropped for years, crops failed worldwide, and some scientists believe the human population nearly went extinct, shrinking to fewer than 10,000 survivors. If Yellowstone were to unleash a similar eruption today, the results could be devastating on a modern scale. Ash clouds could blanket much of North America, stretching as far as Toronto in the northeast and Austin, Texas in the south. Imagine farms across the Midwest buried under toxic dust. The United States, one of the world's biggest food producers, would suddenly face mass crop failures. Global food supplies would collapse. Countries dependent on American grain exports could fall into famine within months. Meanwhile, the volcanic ash in the upper atmosphere would block sunlight, triggering a dramatic cooling of the planet. Some climate models predict a six-year volcanic winter, followed by a thousand-year mini-ice age. That means global agriculture wouldn't just be disrupted, it could be crippled for an entire generation. And with food shortages come riots, wars, and mass migrations on a scale humanity has never seen. So, if this nightmare scenario is even possible, the obvious question is, are scientists seeing signs of it happening soon? If all of this sounds like an apocalyptic movie, here's the good news. Experts don't believe Yellowstone is on the brink of a super eruption anytime soon. But that doesn't mean scientists are relaxed. In fact, Yellowstone is one of the most heavily monitored pieces of land on Earth. The U.S. Geological Survey has dozens of seismographs, GPS stations, and satellite imaging systems pointed at the park at all times. These tools measure the tiniest changes, like ground swelling, gas emissions, and earthquake patterns. Since 2004, parts of Yellowstone's caldera have risen nearly eight inches, like the Earth itself is breathing. While the uplift has slowed in recent years, it's a reminder that magma is still moving beneath our feet. Earthquakes are another warning system. Yellowstone experiences thousands of small quakes every year, most too minor to feel. But every tremor is like a heartbeat, telling scientists the system is still alive. Even Yellowstone's geysers play a role. Old Faithful and Steamboat Geyser, the tallest in the world, are fueled by the same underground heat that drives the supervolcano. When geyser activity changes, geologists take notice. The bottom line? Scientists don't expect an eruption soon, but the system is restless. And with a volcano, this powerful, restless is never comforting. But what if Yellowstone doesn't go out with one massive explosion? What if the danger comes in smaller, more frequent bursts? Not every Yellowstone event would be world-ending. In fact, geologists believe the more likely scenario is a series of smaller but still destructive eruptions. One possibility is a hydrothermal explosion. That's when superheated water trapped underground suddenly flashes into steam, blasting through the surface. These explosions can launch rocks the size of cars, carve craters hundreds of feet wide, and happen with little warning. Imagine standing near a hot spring when the ground beneath you detonates. That's the kind of local threat Yellowstone faces all the time. Another risk is earthquakes. The park sits in a highly active seismic zone, and thousands of quakes rattle the area each year. Most are too small to notice, but history shows that even a mid-sized quake could damage infrastructure, trigger landslides, or set off geysers in unpredictable ways. And then there's the possibility of a smaller volcanic eruption, something more like Mount Pinatubo in 1991. That eruption killed over 800 people, displaced millions, and cooled global temperatures for nearly two years. If Yellowstone produced a scaled-down eruption, it wouldn't destroy civilization, but it could still cause billions in damages, disrupt air travel for months, and change weather patterns across the Northern Hemisphere. So while the apocalyptic scenario grabs headlines, these smaller events might actually be the greater day-to-day -day hazard for people living near Yellowstone. But whether it's a minor blast or the big one, the truth is the same. Yellowstone will erupt again. The only question is when. If Yellowstone did erupt on a massive scale, what happens after the ash settles? life wouldn't bounce back quickly. Ashfall would collapse roofs, poison rivers, and make farming impossible across huge parts of North America. Millions of people would be forced to migrate, 
turning entire regions into ghost towns. Economies would collapse under the strain, and governments would face an unprecedented refugee crisis. Globally, nations would scramble to adapt. Food shortages could spark conflict. Supply chains would crumble. Even technology would suffer. Ash particles in the atmosphere can short out satellites cutting off communications. It could take decades, maybe centuries, for ecosystems and societies to recover. In that sense, Yellowstone isn't just a geological threat, it's a civilizational one. And that brings us to the final question. Is humanity truly ready for the day Yellowstone wakes up? The truth about Yellowstone is both terrifying and fascinating. On one hand, the odds of it erupting in our lifetime are slim. On the other hand, when it does erupt, whether that's a thousand years from now or a hundred thousand, the impact will be unlike anything humanity has ever faced. Think about this. Modern civilization has existed for only about 6,000 years. Agriculture, cities, governments, technology, all of it fits into a blink of an eye compared to Earth's four and a half billion years. And in that blink, Yellowstone has stayed silent. Our entire story as humans has unfolded in a geological pause a rare calm between cataclysmic events. But the Earth doesn't care about human timelines. To the planet, a hundred thousand years is nothing. The forces below Yellowstone have been building since long before humans walked the Earth, and they'll keep building long after we're gone. That perspective raises haunting questions. If Yellowstone gave us a century of warning, could humanity actually prepare? Could we relocate millions, redesign global agriculture, and build food reserves that last decades? Or would political division, mistrust, and chaos doom us before the eruption even begins? History isn't on our side. Past disasters, plagues, wars, famines show that humanity often reacts too late. But Yellowstone offers no room for delay. A super eruption wouldn't be a local disaster or a regional problem. It would be planetary. And yet, in a strange way, Yellowstone also connects us. Every nation would face the same darkened skies. Every community would feel the same cold winds and crop failures. Survival would demand cooperation on a scale the world has never seen. In that sense, Yellowstone is both a threat and a test, a reminder that our species either learns to work together or risks being erased by forces far older and more powerful than ourselves. So, will Yellowstone erupt tomorrow? Almost certainly not, but will it erupt again? Absolutely. The only uncertainty is whether humanity will still be here when it does. And if we are, whether we'll be ready for the day Earth's greatest sleeping giant finally wakes. And if you found this breakdown fascinating, make sure to hit subscribe, because Yellowstone isn't the only hidden danger beneath our feet. From megaquakes to asteroid impacts, we're exploring the biggest threats humanity could face. Don't miss what's coming next.